Hello everybody, my name is Kara, and today I'm here with the Twelfth Night book tag. This tag was originally created by Charlotte from Bookish Raider, and I will link her original video down below. She was also the one who tagged me, and because this is the month of All the World's a Page Readathon, which is the Shakespeare-themed readathon I'm co-hosting, I am so glad she brought this tag back now, and I am very excited to do it, and I thought it'd be perfect to get it done during this month. The first question is, what is the twelfth book on your bookshelf? And when I was deciding which one to pick, I kind of went to my, like, immediate TBR shelf. At least that's what it's supposed to be, but now it's just kind of turned into, like, random books I want to read, and that is The Dragon with a Chocolate Heart by Stephanie Burgess. This is the first book in a middle grade trilogy, and I had thought, like, I had this vague idea it was about a girl who gets turned into a dragon, and then I looked at the synopsis to talk about it for this video, and it's actually about a dragon who gets turned into a girl, and I am even more excited now. <laughs> um, that sounds great. I have read a couple other books by this author that I didn't love. They were a different middle grade fantasy series, um, but I'm hopeful about this one, so hopefully second time is the charm. The second question is, if you had to choose a fictional character to be with you on your 12th birthday, who would it be and why? You can probably tell that all of these questions are themed around the number 12, which I think is so cool. Um, and my answer for this question is Mimi from Midsummer's Mayhem by Rajani La Roca, and I have several reasons for this. Um, one, I just love Mimi as a character, and I feel like if I were her age, we would definitely be friends. Like, she's kind of quiet, but she's also really passionate about the things that she loves, and that's kind of how I am, I feel like, too. Also, the fact that she's a baker would be perfect for a birthday party, um, and I just feel like we would really get along. Number three is what are 12 of your favorite standalones, and we're gonna do speed round for this, <laughs> because I can talk way too much about books, we all know this. Um, so I'm just gonna mention each one and hit like a couple of key points um, and I will link videos where I talk about them in more depth if I have those. The Enchanted Sonata by Heather Dixon Wallwork. This is a nutcracker retelling with wonderful whimsical writing and I love the world building, I love the ships, there's like a main romance and a side romance and I love both of them. Lovely War by Julie Berry. This was my favorite book of last year. Um, World War One historical fiction with a bit of a mythological twist. Um, absolutely wonderful integration of Julie Berry's own characters and own story uh, while also drawing on Greek mythology and incorporating a lot of real world World War One history absolutely stunning book. Next is Blanca y Roja by Anna Marie McLemore, retelling of Snow White and Rose Red, and also a little bit of Swan Lake. Um, follows a family curse. There's a lot of wonderful commentary here about colorism and about queer identity. I always adore their writing. I feel like they use description in a way that is beautiful without feeling like it's done for no reason. Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik, the wintry fantasy novel of my dreams, and give me all of the competent female main characters. Like, all of them. I will literally never get tired of it. <laughs> I can't decide which of the three main women are my favorite, because I love all of them so deeply in different ways. Yeah, just incredible plotting and world building and characterization. I never had trouble uh, determining which of the point of view characters we were reading from. Adore this. The Book Thief by Marcus Zusak. I know it's kind of cliche, but this book did really change me as a person. It kind of reminded me of how of how powerful a well-told story can be because I read it at a time in my life where I was still reading and I was still loving reading and I was still finding books that surprised me. But I read this book at a point when I kind of felt like I couldn't really be surprised by how powerful a book was anymore, if that makes sense. So I was still finding books that surprised me and I was still finding books that I loved, but not necessarily finding books that I was surprised at how much I loved or how deeply they affected me, and this book did that for me. I I know it doesn't work for a lot of people, but I absolutely love it. Sherwood by Megan Spooner. This is a female-centric retelling of Robin Hood, and we follow Marion as the main character as she takes on the role of Robin Hood after Robin is killed fighting in the Crusades right at the beginning of the book. I think this is a really beautiful look at the different ways that you can be a strong woman. Um, I thought the exploration of grief was done really thoughtfully. I think the exploration of relationships and how people can change was done really thoughtfully. Um, this is a very polarizing book. I know a lot of people didn't enjoy it, but I loved it. Um, I think that if you don't want to see certain key elements of the Robin Hood story changed, you might not enjoy this one, but I went in open to whatever Megan Spooner was going to do, and I just absolutely was blown away by this. Um, I think about this book a lot. A Sky Painted Gold by Laura Wood. This is set in 1920s Cornwall, I believe. Wonderful world building, um, a really cozy kind of vibe, completely swoon-worthy romance that I initially didn't think I was going to like that much. And I also think this book dealt with some social issues of the time period in a very subtle and thoughtful way. They're supporting characters who are queer or who are black, and we really see the way that that affects them at this time period. Um, this is definitely not like a book that focuses on those issues, so I wouldn't go into this expecting it to be a really um, like sweeping exploration of those ideas, but I did appreciate that we still had those things dealt with, even if it was in a smaller way. Love from A to Z by S.K. Ali, one of my absolute favorite contemporaries. Um, I love the main characters. Zainab is such an incredible person, and I have said this every time, but she is the kind of character where you read the book and it's like, I hope that Zainab would be friends with me. Like, I hope that I am that good of a person. I loved both of our main characters and their relationship and their friendships, and this book dealt with so many important themes about Islamophobia and grief and just 
just so many things this book did and like I said one of my favorite contemporary novels. Kindred by Octavia E. Butler. I really can't add anything to the many thoughtful things that have been said about how um, how brilliantly executed this book is and how important this book is. Like the way it deals with uh, personal responsibility and if people can change and how much people can change. I thought this was incredibly powerful, um, obviously very upsetting to read in parts because the primary setting is the Antebellum South and our main character is a black woman. Also this is one where like don't expect the time travel to be the point of this book because it's really not and that's how I tend to like my time travel stories is when it's really a vehicle for the exploration of characters and themes and the story rather than being an important focus of the story itself. And finally Crimson Bound by Rosamund Hodge. Um, this is a favorite book that I almost never recommend to people because I know it's very polarizing. A lot of people don't like it. Not many friends or people I follow have read this book and the ones who have mostly kind of hated it. <laughs> so I just like don't recommend this book because I feel like it's really hard to know the exact reader it would work for. So I'm not even going to really talk about this one that much. Just know that I absolutely love it and that this ship is on my OTP shelf. Number four, have you read 12 or more books in a month? If so, what month specifically? And I actually regularly read more than 12 books in a month. Um, I kind of got into the habit, I, I don't even know when, on my channel. Like I had a few like really good like high number reading months in a row I think and I just kind of got in the habit of continuing to do that which I actually like. Um, I don't feel rushed to finish books. I just read a lot and like I guess relatively quickly. So yeah, I it's not really rare that I would read more than 12 books, but I definitely think the highest months have been um, when I had particular readathons that I was doing where I was trying to read a lot of specific books for it. Um, but yeah, I'm generally really happy with the amount of books I read in a month. And also like there's no like right number of books to read in a month, like quality over quantity, you know? Number five, what are your 12 favorite book series? And these are going to be 12 of my favorites, I think, because I definitely have other series that I love. Um, and this is going to be another speed round because we do not have time for me to talk at length about all of these. Um, Artemis Fowl series by Owen Colfer. Not even going to talk about these because I never shut up about this series and how important it is to me. Um, Midnight for Charlie Bone or The Children of the Red King Chronicles, I think is what it's called by Jenny Nimmo. Um, deals with a magical academy, but definitely a really dark one. I really love a lot of the characters. Like the kids are definitely very important. They have a very active role in um, like saving the day or pursuing their goal, but they're also but there are also some adults that actually help them, which is really nice to see in a middle grade series. Love Trigger Magic series by Anna Mariano. Uh, I have talked about this series pretty frequently lately because I just love it so much. We have Baking Magic, we have wonderful family relationships. We have, especially in this book, um, exploration of some really important ideas in a really subtle way, specifically in this book with the way that Leo's uh, family's magic is kind of matrilineal and how um, how some characters don't like that basically. They don't like that it's this like women's work associated magic. Um, so just an absolutely wonderful series. I've talked about it a lot recently so <laughs> you probably already know uh, the things I love about it. The Time series by Megan Morrison. This is a series of companion novels that are um, all retellings of a different fairy tale and I just adore this series. Incredible character development of all of our three main leads um, across their books and I love the way this world kind of draws you in with like oh it's you know it's a fairy tale world it's kind of like cutesy and um, like magic and sparkles and all of that and then you see the dark side like you see the really awful implications of if these fairy tale worlds were real. Like with all these beautiful ball gowns um, we see the workers who have to work in sweatshops to make those and I just think the way it, these books balance the really fun and light elements with the really serious elements is just done really beautifully. I actually have a full spoiler free review on the series so I will link that down below. The Chronicles of Narnia series by C.S. Lewis. Um, I'm not actually going to talk about this one that much either because I feel like it would take me a long time to explain the reasons this is an important series to me, um, the formative effect it had on the things that I like in characters, Edmund Pevensey for example, um, he was one of the ones that really just sold me on, on character arcs and especially multiple book character arcs. I just think it would take too long to explain the reasons I love those books and the definite problems that this series has. I'm not saying it's a perfect series but I just feel like it would take too long to explain all of that, all of the like complicated feelings I have for these books so we're just gonna move on. The Red Abbey Chronicles by Maria Turchenenoff translated by A.A. A. Prime. This is an incredibly feminist fantasy series. Um, this one is also kind of a series of companion novels. Um, the second book is more of a prequel and that one I think you could read in any order and you could even skip that one if you want and the reason I mention that is because that one is definitely the most really really hard to read in parts just tons of trigger warnings for that book um, but the series overall is just like I said so feminist the world building is meticulous I love the like female centered magic and religious system and exploring that that was just so interesting to read I really loved Maurice as a main character and this is another series that really focuses on 
the many ways that there are to be a feminist, to be a strong woman. Like, you don't have to be this very stereotypical version of strong. You can do traditionally feminine things. You can change or fight against the status quo in a quieter way, and that is still important. And I love the way that these books communicated that, especially this one, which is Marie C. Redmantle. The Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer. Um, sci-fi fairy tale retellings. This was the series that made me realize I love fairy tale retellings, and also the series that made me realize I sometimes can like sci-fi. I know a lot of people feel like this series is overhyped, and I do think people talk about it a lot, so I can understand why people might be sick of it. Um, but I really like it. I think Marissa Meyer really excels at writing characters and character dynamics and getting you invested in them very quickly, at least for me. Um, I love the way that each of these books has their main character, but it also adds to the larger plot. Um, I love seeing the way the fairy tale elements were explored, and I just, I just love her characters, and I love her relationships with her characters, and being a character-focused reader, that's something that's very significant for me. Um, and I also just really click with her writing style. It's not super fancy or anything, but I think she's really great at dialogue. Again, that goes back to the things I love about the way she writes characters, and so far I've just really enjoyed everything I've read from her. The Seven Realms series by Cinder Williams Chima. Um, this is kind of an oldie but goodie. I mean oldie in like relative terms. And this is also one of the reasons why I get kind of annoyed when people use a descriptor like it was a typical 2009 fantasy as like shorthand for a particular kind of book that they're talking about that they don't like because this book was also published in 2009. I feel like it really doesn't fall into a lot of those criticisms of like typical YA fantasy um, of a few years ago but that's a separate discussion I guess. Um, I just really love the series. Uh, character development again is just stellar. I went from not being able to stand Raisa in the first book here, she's the female main character, to being like, I would go into battle for you by the second or third book. So I think that is pretty impressive. I think the political machinations in this book are so thoughtful, like the different um, factions of people, the different kingdoms, um, the different relations between like different cultures or ethnic groups. I think those were handled in a really um, thoughtful way. I feel like that complexity was given the time and the development it needed. Those cultural and political elements were really important throughout the series and I just think the way those were incorporated into the plot um, was just done really well and in a really interesting and thoughtful way. The Lumetire Chronicles by Melina Arqueta. This is a fantasy series I think really excels at the emotional connection for me. Um, right from the first book, like I really buy into these many many years of history that these characters had. You start at the first book just kind of being caught up on all of these really deep memories and history and trauma um, for these various people and even though it's something that you don't see on page, it's just like the way it's written and the way these characters are written. I feel like Melina Marquetta does a fantastic job of getting you, like pulling you right into that and making you believe um, all of this history and all of this background that these characters have, even though it's done in like a relatively short amount of time. Um, again, I love the cast of characters. This is definitely another very complex um, fantasy series. There's a lot of themes about grief and trauma and vengeance and forgiveness. This is another kind of classic YA fantasy series that I think uh, deserves the hype it gets. The kind of connected companion novels, I guess, of Graceland's Folktales. This one is Starry River of the Sky. Um, beautiful illustrations that I always show off. I just think they're gorgeous. I love the way that Graceland draws on her knowledge of Chinese folktales, but she also weaves them together into new stories. Like, they're not, like, you don't read this book and you just get, like, word for word um, copies of the stories that she grew up with. She uses those as a starting point. But it's not that there's a problem if you incorporate, um, like, word for word folktales or anything. I just think it's really interesting that the way she did these books, they feel like uh, traditional fairy tales or folk tales, but they're not quite. She kind of puts her own spin on it. Um, I think that's a really interesting way to tell these stories. Um, this one especially, I love the main character. I love the themes in her books and the way that no matter the story, like I get to the end and I think I'm prepared for the end and then something happens that just like, it really kind of kicks me in the chest, but in the best way. Um, I just think she really nails the emotional moments of these books and again the themes, the folk tales, um, I just really enjoy these. Shadow of the Fox series by Julie Kagawa. I love the characters. Um, I love the way this series really shows that tropes are not inherently bad things because in a lot of ways the characters do feel kind of like certain archetypes or character types but the way that they're done is just so engaging and so lovable that I don't mind. Um, I really really love the character relationships in this series. I like the overall story. I found that interesting and I was really impressed with the emotional payoff of the last book. And finally, The Young Elites Trilogy by Marie Lu. This is Italian-inspired fantasy, um, and it's also kind of a villain origin story, which generally I don't like, but this is one of the exceptions because I think the characterization is done so well, and for the most part, I find the choices that Adelina, the main character, makes believable. So it doesn't feel like we're reading a villain origin story where, like, they're making clearly <laughs> bad choices or, like, evil choices or stupid choices or something because we, just because we know it has to end in a villain. Um, I feel like the complexity here, it wasn't just a straight progression from 
point A to point B. I really loved these characters and their relationships. Um, in I think it's book two in particular, there was one character who I had made up my mind not to like uh, because of kind of what they represented in the story. And then I loved them. They're like one of my favorite characters in the series. I just really enjoy these books. Um, I think they are probably the most underhyped thing that Marie Lou has written and I think that's a shame because I think they're fantastic. And finally, the sixth and last question is name at least 12 Shakespeare plays off the top of your head. Here we go. Midsummer Night's Dream, Richard III, Antony and Cleopatra, Measure for Measure, uh, Twelfth Night, <laughs> What to Do About Nothing, Hamlet, Macbeth, um, Henry IV Part 1, Henry IV Part 2. Oh, I'm gonna have to cut out all these like blank seconds of me just staring off and thinking. <laughs> oh my gosh, I just need two more. Why can't I remember a single Shakespeare play? As You Like It, and let's think of a tragedy, King Lear. <laughs> There we go, I got 12. <laughs> Took me a possibly embarrassing amount of time, but I still did it. So that was the 12th night book tag. Um, I had so much fun doing that, so thank you Charlotte for tagging me. I'm going to tag my All the World's a Page co-hosts, Julia from Shakespeare and Such and Olivia from Olivia's Catastrophe, um, as well as anybody else who is participating in All the World's a Page who would like to do this. And even if you're not participating in the readathon, anybody who loves Shakespeare or 12th night or just enjoys these questions, I tag you. I would love to see more people do this tag. I think it's super fun. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you soon with another video and I hope you love the next book you read. Bye!